Welcome. I gotta say, this is an amazing moment after all of the, the work and all the detail shifting to look out and say, hey, we, we've got a conference. So thank you for being here. <laughs> Heterodox Academy held its first annual conference one year ago. And I stood on this stage, having just two weeks prior made a cross-country move with my eight-year-old in tow from Southern California to New York. And it's been a year of transition and growth, both for me personally and for the organization. On the personal front, um, as a recovering academic, I've learned that I need to put vacation, woo, vacation days on my own calendar so I can no longer count on easy access to spring break, summer break, fall break and winter break. Um, I've also learned the sanity saving value of noise canceling headphones in a city teeming with jackhammers and of happy hours with friends in a city oddly void of eye contact. <laughs> I, I've taken up three self-expanding activities. I'm learning to play bridge, I'm learning to play the electric bass, and I learned how to order takeout from Seamless and that's a very dangerous thing. And, and this one's important. Um, I've learned the preferred pronunciation of my board chair's last name, Jonathan Haidt. <laughs> <laughs> and in terms of what this past year has been like for Heterodox Academy, I'm gonna take a step back. As some of you already know, Heterodox Academy's origin story could be accurately summarized as three guys and a blog. Three scholars from three different disciplines authored concurrent articles reflecting on the cost of orthodoxies within their disciplines. Chris Martin, Nick Rosencrantz, and Jonathan Haidt, they joined forces to create a blog, which very quickly attracted a lot of readers and a lot of writers, and calls for a membership structure. Soon, collaborations took root, creating new tools and great research. And before long, a small staff was needed to actually steward projects and seize opportunities. Efforts and relationships grew organically. At that point, John and others realized that a more formal organization would be needed in order to harness the potential of the open inquiry movement. For Heterodox Academy, this past year has been all about putting the organs in the organization, establishing critical strategic and operational foundations upon which to build programmatic and collaborative successes. To name just a few, since our last conference, we've obtained our 501c3 status, established a board of directors, identified metrics by which we track progress, we built a membership database, and brought needed focus to our work through strategic planning. What was once an energized vision has transformed into a passionately nonpartisan, nonprofit organization, strategically built to achieve an urgent need, improving research and education in the academy by increasing open inquiry, viewpoint diversity, and constructive disagreement. We aspire to create college classrooms and campuses that welcome diverse people who hold diverse viewpoints and that equip learners with the habits of both heart and mind to engage in that, with that diversity to gain a deeper understanding of the human condition, our cultural world, our social world, our aesthetic world. We see an academy eager to welcome professors and students and speakers who approach problems and questions from a range of different viewpoints explicitly valuing the role such diversity plays in advancing the pursuit of knowledge, discovery, growth, and innovation. Rather than merely tolerating that someone sees the world differently than we do, we want to be curious, we want to lean into that, knowing that all of us are situated knowers, all knowledge is situated, and that only together by holding up these objects of inquiry, whatever they might be, and twisting them and turning them together, can we really understand the nuance of those things. To achieve these ends, we engage in four types of work. First, we publicly or we increase public awareness to elevate the importance of these issues on campus. During the first three quarters of this fiscal year, we published 34 essays on our blog, attracted approximately 37,000 visitors to our website each month, produced 24 episodes of the half hour of heterodoxy podcast, collected benchmark data from two national samples of students currently enrolled at four-year colleges. And we became host to the Gallup Knight data about free expression on campus. Over the coming weeks, look for the release of reports about these benchmark data and the launch of a great graphic user interface that will allow visitors to quickly and seamlessly explore patterns in the Gallup Knight data. 
Our second type of work is that we develop tools and resources that professors, administrators, and others can deploy within their local context, both to assess and to improve the climate for expression. So far this year, All Minus One, our beautifully illustrated uh, version of chapter two of John Stuart Mill's On Liberty, was downloaded over 51,000 times from our website. The campus, or the campus expression survey was administered on at least 11 campuses, and I personally interviewed 22 college presidents as part of a listening tour to understand the challenges they face in the open inquiry space and what they need from HXA to create local change. What are they asking for? Best practices, metrics, interventions. Thanks to a $2.8 million grant from the Templeton Foundation, Heterodox Academy will be able to create these things over the coming years. We're also going to need some really stellar researchers on the staff, so let me know if you're on the job market. Third, our third bit of work is that we publicly recognize institutions that make progress on these matters. For example, tonight we'll be awarding Claremont McKenna College with our Institutional Excellence Award. In addition, we highlighted nine other colleges in a recent feature published by Reason Magazine. These schools provide models, really visible pathways for others looking to reclaim open inquiry as a cornerstone of the academy. And again, thanks to the Templeton Grant, next year we will launch the HXA Distinguished Academy Initiative. Like a LEED certification for energy-wise buildings, this accolade will signal to the world that a given college has provided concrete, direct evidence that it has in place the philosophies, the policies, and the practices necessary to create a positive environment for expression and constructive engagement across lines of difference. Finally, we cultivate communities of practice among teachers, researchers, and administrators. To this end, we added on average 43 new members each month to our, um, to our member roster, which now exceeds 3,200 people who represent many different disciplines, institution types, countries, demographics, and political commitments. We added a professional affiliate membership category in recognition of the central role staff play on any college campus. And we launched four HX discipline groups in psychology, sociology, classics, and rhetoric to enable scholars to connect with each other and with opportunities to better understand and enact heterodoxy in their teaching and their research. In the coming months, we hope to expand the number of disciplines represented in this initiative. So if you're interested in starting a group or getting involved in one of our established groups, please reach out. This week's conference, of course, is one of our major community building events. We expect a cumulative 430 members, community leaders, administrators, philanthropists, and students to join us here to engage in the questions at the core of our mission. The program, which I hope you've had a chance to at least peruse, features a stellar lineup of speakers and panelists and moderators and workshop facilitators who will advance discourse, provide tools, offer solutions, and ask tough questions. The program also features opportunities for participants to think together about how best to foster heterodox cultures on campuses and in our disciplines, creating communities of practice that we hope will extend far beyond these conference walls. To state the obvious, the problems we seek to fix are incredibly complex and are often contextualized within the histories, the visions, and the missions of each institution. The conference sessions will dive into some of that complexity, exploring, for instance, critical questions about the relationship among viewpoint diversity and other forms of diversities, and about which ideas gain entry into the academy. Who decides? How are those decisions made? On this first question, I'll quote my HXA colleague, Musa Algarbi. If we care about demographic diversity and inclusion, we also must care about ideological diversity and inclusion. To the extent that we attempt to pursue one to the exclusion or at the expense of the other, we are setting ourselves up for failure. Or as our colleagues at Interfaith Youth Corps put it, if we have a campus where everybody looks different but thinks the same, are we really capitalizing on the benefits of diversity? And to the second question about which ideas gain entry into the academy, we see viewpoint diversity as an instrumental good, not an absolute good valuable to the extent it contributes to teaching, learning, and discovery, discovery and the exposure of falsehoods. Quality of thought and modes of engagement matter. 
Your colleagues at HXA know this is challenging work, and we applaud all of you who are developing constructive solutions. While we know there are no one-size-fits-all solutions or answers, we also know, to, to turn a Clintonian phrase here, that there's nothing wrong with the academy that can't be fixed by what's right with the academy. Please let us know what you are learning and what you are doing so that we may amplify your good ideas, so that others may grab onto these ideas, to, into those ideas that make sense within their context. Given the complexities of this terrain, I suspect many of us will leave the conference with more questions than answers. May those questions compel all of us to ask with genuine curiosity and care, how do you see it? Let's get to it, shall we? Thank you.